Please welcome Marshreen and Saumia that will uh, talk about the uh, automated emergency paramedical response system. And I guess there will come some impact from uh, artificial intelligence also here. Go ahead. Hi, um, thank you so much. I know it's uh, pretty late and I appreciate all of you staying back. And uh, so this was a prototype that we developed some time back uh, for an well, the title is self-explanatory. Um, uh, my name is Samya, and this is my colleague, Mashin. And um, so one of our uh, main needs is that we know that a lot, there's been a lot of advancement, especially in the medical sector, in terms of tech. Uh, but there are some systems that are, uh, when we look at it, we feel like it's really primitive. Like, you, we look at some things and say, oh, this could be done so much better. This could be so much more efficient if, you know, it had small little tweaks in it. And, of course, we already know that a few minutes can make a big difference between life and death. Um, so, that what we wanted to do with our prototype of an automated emergency paramedical response system was to fill in some of these gaps that we thought was there in the current medical system. One of the driving motivations that we had was to provide a feasible solution that spans the entire socioeconomic strata. As we know that the problems that people in urban areas have in terms of medical care is not the same as people in rural areas or semi-rural areas would have in terms of medical care. In urban areas, especially in countries like India, where I'm from, we do not have a dedicated lane for ambulances. So when we need emergency medical response, there's a lot of time, it's too late. We, it's just not fast enough. Whereas in semi-urban and rural areas, reachability is the problem. For medical care, we need to travel kilometers and kilometers. There are no specialized doctors that can be, pro, uh, that can be present in uh, semi-urban and rural areas. Uh, what we thought was the best way to address these, both of these issues was a drone-based paramedical response system. Um, so our uh, prototype that we developed has five different main modules uh, that we'll be touching upon it a little bit, and how they interact with each other and make the system whole. Uh, one is blockchain for medical records, a disease detection chatbot, a di disease detection model, which is basically an umbrella of specialized healthcare services that you could provide to people in semi-urban and rural areas, and a drone for medical delivery, and facial recognition during delivery. Blockchain for medical record. Um, there are a lot of people who have a divided opinions about what blockchain means and why would you want blockchain for medical record. Uh, but what we decided to do was implement a blockchain for uh, our automated, uh, let's just call it AEPRS, the name is too long. So this is in the interest of both patients and doctors. Let me tell you why. Um, so there are a lot of times where doctors face problems if patients do not declare their medical history in cases of communicable diseases like tuberculosis or diseases like AIDS. We know that doctors need to take extra precaution if a patient has communicable diseases like TB or diseases that can be transferred through the blood, like AIDS. Um, the, 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 reason, the many patients do not want to tell their doctors that, oh, I suffer from TB or AIDS or any of the other diseases because they feel like, uh, that, you know, they would be discriminated again. Also, another thing that we found was that availability of patients' complete medical history enables the doctor to find out, is something that you're suffering today because of something that already happened to you some time ago, or is it unrelated? Uh, at the same time, patients need complete confidentiality about their records, and 
uh, patients don't have to carry 1,000 x-rays and so many forms of different hospitals, different consultation papers. They want that only my current doctor should be able to see what medical data I have. So the benefits is that patients can choose who can access their confidential, uh, confidential information. They're assured about their privacy and doctors can take the right decisions. disease protection chatbot is the disease protection chatbot. So what we found is on an individual level, uh, even in urban areas, you want immediate, you know, uh, chatbot detect, uh, detection based on the chatbot thing. So for example, if you're suffering from something and you want an immediate consultation. Uh, so this, not only in semi-urban or rural, even in urban areas, what you can do is we have a chatbot where, so you first fill in your details your name, age, and whatever metadata is required. Then you start, you know, uh, yeah, you start uh, interacting with the with the Informatica API. What basically it does is, based on your given inform information, it tries to detect the symptoms. And so, basically, what happens is, uh, so for, first, when the, uh, there's no the detection has not been done for a, every API call, there's a follow up question. Follow up question. So if there's a pattern that you know this can result to something else there will be a follow up question detect uh, you know given to you and once the entire diagnos diagnostics is done it is sent to the admin who can then look at your chat history see what your symptoms are and and you know then look at things like whether whether it is right to you know deliver the medicines to you or not so there are now a lot of lot of companies which does online delivery of medicines the re regulation says that there, there should be a prescription, prescription, but in a lot of cases, you don't actually have a consultation already done, but people still get it. So what this does is act as a layer in between that. You interact with the API, have the chat history, and then the admin decides whether it's the, you know, it's for the rightful reason or not. So the third module of this is the disease detection model based on deep learning or computer vision. This is basically targeted for the community hospitals. So a lot of these hospitals have these modalities, the city scanner and the MRI scanner, all these things are there. But the, the, you know, the, the specialist has passed. There's like one doctor to 10, uh, you know, 1 billion in, in a lot of cases. There are uh, cases like, you know, neurology where there's one doctor to 10, you know, perhaps millions of patients in countries like India. So what this does is, so you already have the infrastructure to take the scans with different modalities. So if you are a community hospital, what it does is there's a new patient, you decide which model you want to test it. You have your DICOM you know, taken from the, the modalities, you send it, you get the you know, inference done, and you have the result. So you have the you know, initial diagnostics uh, ready for you, at least the initial screening is done. So for our prototype, we did it with the stroke detection model where we, you know, detected strokes based on deep learning models. Another module is, again, delivery by drone. So once it is detected, so in case of individuals, once you interact with the chatbot, you have your like medicines approved or not. In case of community hospitals, after having a look at the, you know, inferred results from the model, you can, you know, you can request for some specific medical aid to be delivered. In both these cases, you can use the drones to use that geolocation and can get delivered based on, you know, which from your pharmacy partners or your blood or blood or organ or whichever partner is there based on everyone is having access level and it can be delivered. Yes, so one very important thing, especially in case of, you know, uh, individuals is you, you should make, you, you need to make sure that the delivery is being done to the right person. So. For that matter, maybe I have an account and you know I interacted with my chatbot, but then I'll, at the time of delivery, you never know which person is it. At the same time, you'll have to do it on the fly and like literally on the fly, your drone should detect it on the edge. It's very difficult for you to for you to you know keep it in continuous interaction with the cloud to keep sending the HD frames and then getting the inference back. 
So what we have done is we have used neural compute stick. Uh, basically, it's a like fanless, very tiny device. Perhaps I'll talk about it in the lightning talk on 17th in much more details. Basically, what it does is you can just you know offload your models on that on a device, and it will run the model on you know on the edge in a very low cost, and it requires very less power. So even with something like a Raspi, it gives me the power to at least infer or deploy my deep learning models so that you know I can uh, perform the inference on the edge. Another thing that is very important is when we are having models like these, it's not possible to have all the faces in the world and then train it. For example, if one of you is my new customer, I can't train my model again to add you as a class there. So for that, what we have done is we have used FaceNet. Basically, what it does is uh, only, only the vector embeddings for your face, the new face, is saved. And we can save it as a NumPy array. And while time, at the time of inferencing, I'm just comparing your vector and, you know, embeddings with the live camera frames. And if it matches, I know that person is you. And it's, this requires me you know, not to train my model for every new class that is being added. And once I find that you know, it's the rightful person and it's the authorized person, I can allow the, the drone to either you know, deliver you or de uh, give you the medicines, or in case of community hospitals, again, the authorized persons can only get the medical aids delivered. Yeah, so um, just these were some of the technologies that we have used to what we thought was the main areas that require some little bit of technological intervention. So I just wanted to, you know, tie everything together. Please forgive my bad use case diagram. I did not pay attention during my software engineering lecture. So yeah, there are ma mainly uh, three different people who can communicate with the complete integrated system. One is an individual, and when we say individual, we mean a person in an urban area or a rural area if there is enough internet connectivity, uh, which when you register for the service as an individual, what you can do is you can access the dashboard, you can register as a new user, and then as an individual, what you can do is you can um, access the chatbot, the disease detection chatbot, that uh, you say, okay, today maybe I have a little bit of fever, or sorry, or you know, I'm not feeling too good, whatever your symptoms are, and uh, your symptom, your final, you know, so if it says, oh, you have a fever, have you had a fever for the past five days, or did you break a bone recently? Uh, so it gives that. In, uh, sort of follow-up questions that finally gives that, you know, maybe this person has ABC disease. Um, and when you get that maybe you have ABC disease, your admin gets a notification that, okay, this person needs medical attention, they might have ABC disease, uh, do you want to approve the medicines for this particular person? And the admin can approve or, you know, reject your medicines. Um, then we have a module for community hospital, and the community hospital can do a lot of things. The community hospital can say, okay, we are in a semi-rural or rural area, and we have uh, the need for maybe 500 tablets of paracetamol, and can you get this to us without us having to travel some 50, 100 kilometers? And uh, then the admin gets that request with your particular geolocation. And the admin can say, OK, yeah, we can give you that. Um, again, uh, yeah, so the community hospital also has uh, uh, under uh, an umbrella of the, you know, of the, dis I mean, specialization or disease detection where it can uh, upload CT scans or DICOM images and it can, you can find out uh, which disease a person suffers from using the CT scans. So currently we have only one uh, module that we deployed uh, which was for stroke detection, ischemic stroke detection. 
And uh, a person can uh, say if the CT scan results. What the community hospital can also do is upload patient information to the blockchain. And as an admin, you can have a complete log logging information about uh, uh, what individuals have ordered which type of medicines, what community hospitals have asked for, and, you know, help in any case. Um, this was our system architecture. If anybody is interested, there are a lot of specifications that are that we use that is not necessarily needed to be used. We try to keep this uh, presentation as uh, impartial to the technologies that we've used as possible because we just wanted to say that, okay, this is what we can do. This is how we can look at uh, emergent, uh, as paramedical responses, what we thought were the gaps that were there, how we thought we could fill it. And, um, yeah, I think we have some time for questions. And if you want more information, you can always refer to this link. It has the paper that was published in Springer. Um, if you need any more information, that probably dwell, delves a little deeper. We just wanted to touch upon some things. Yeah, thank you very much. First, maybe an applause for this nice presentation. <laughs> and indeed, we have time for questions. Somebody? Yeah, we have uh, developed uh, a prototype of this. And uh, we actually had a video, but in the interest of time, it's a bit long. So if you would like to see it later, probably we can connect. Uh, I'm just interested on the, the tail end, the last mile where for pharmaceutical delivery. Yeah. Did you all really test the drone delivery? Yes, we have a video, like it's on a prototype level. We have not deployed it yet. The regulations again, you know, won't le let us, you know, test it that much. But prototype wise, in a restricted environment, definitely yes. So, yeah. Thank you. Do you have any source code, public source code available? So, we are planning to. So. Perhaps in a week's time, the deployment models and all those things, we're just cleaning it up. It was like, it's quite messy. We were just trying out a lot of things. But yeah, we'll publish a lot of these modules on GitHub. Yeah, so. Um, most of these are coming from the world open source, like the Informatica is open source, the models that we're using, TensorFlow, that's open source. So all of this is open source. We just wanted to give a little bit of an overview how you can tie all of these together. But uh, yeah, well, probably in a week, we'll have a little bit more we'll clean of it. Where can we? Uh, yeah, I have, we have the GitHub account with our same name. So like for me, the name unfortunately is so unique, it will be very easy to find. For her, it's a full name, so yeah. <laughs> so it's Mushrin for me and Soumya Savarna for her on GitHub. So we'll have our perhaps posted on both maybe, uh, step to step by step of, you know, which open source tools and libraries that we used, how we, you know, brought it together, and even whatever components we developed, most of it, you know, that will will be, you know, pushing it. You can find also the contact information on the schedule, actually, from Fulsasia. There's the yes. GitHub and everything available. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for the time. Yeah. Thank you again.